Today Crave, Pastor John here from Polo with week four of our wall series. And before we get started, um, just to start off, does does anybody here like have trouble like finishing projects? Like, like you start something, like you start an art project or uh, maybe you start a project outside or or a book or a TV show, but then you, you don't finish it. Um, I don't know about you, um, I don't have any trouble finishing TV shows or movies, that's pretty easy. But the one thing that I have always struggled with is, I love books, I love reading, I would consider myself a Bible nerd, all right? But I have an issue with starting books and then not finishing them, right? Like I'll start a book and it's so good, and then I'll start another book, or I'll get busy doing something else and I don't finish. And I think we all have trouble finishing things at certain points in our life. Um, So when we have trouble finishing things, it's no surprise that when we feel like we're not progressing in our faith and in our relationship with God, or when we feel like we just keep making the same mistake and the same sin over and over again, it's easy to feel like God's gonna give up on us or God's gonna throw in the towel on us or God's just gonna move on to something else because we don't seem to be progressing. It's really easy to feel that way. But students, thank God, He is nothing like us. God always, always, always finishes what He starts. God is not a man that He should not finish what He starts, okay? God's not a man, so He's not gonna be like that, okay? So, but what do you do What do you do if you don't sense or feel like God is working in your life? I've been there many, 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 many times, okay? What do you do? Or what do you do when you feel like he's given up on you? Scripture has this amazing promise in Philippians 1.6. It says, and I am certain that God who began the good work in you, within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Jesus Christ returns. So here we have this amazing promise, students, that no matter what, God will never give up on you. God will never throw in the towel on you. God will never write you off as a lost cause. God is committed to finishing what he started in you when you trusted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Come on, somebody. God is not going to give up on you no matter what you feel, okay? God finishes what he starts and he's gonna finish his plan for your life. And we see that in Nehemiah's life. We see God finishing what he started. Remember Nehemiah, we talked all the way back in week one of how he knew that his capital city, Jerusalem, the walls were torn down and in ruins and it just brought tears to his eyes and God gave him a vision of rebuilding the walls. And guess what? It happened, it got finished. In Nehemiah 6, 15 through 16, this is what it says. It says, so on October 2nd, the wall was finished. Just 52 days after we had begun, when our enemies and the surrounding nations heard about it, they were frightened and humiliated. They realized this work had been done with the help of our God. So Nehemiah, with God's help, finished this huge and and overwhelming task of rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem was a huge city. So there was a lot to rebuild. God fulfilled one of his plans for Nehemiah's life. And he wants to do the exact same thing for you too, right where you are, sitting right where you are tonight. God has specific plans for your life. He has specific things that he wants you to do. In Psalm 139, 16, this is so cool. Listen to this, it says, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. So students, the Bible says, before you were even born, before you breathed your first breath, God already had a plan laid out for your life. 
He already had things thought up that he wanted you to do, things he, that he wanted you to accomplish, things that he wanted you to do to move his kingdom forward, things that he wanted you to do to reach other people for the gospel and for Jesus. And the Bible says also that the things that God has planned out for you, it's more than you can even ask, think, or imagine. Here's another scripture, Ephesians 3.20, now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. And y'all, I pray this verse all the time and I'm like, God, do infinitely more than I could ever ask or imagine. And I remember God speaking to me and showing me, hey, I can do more than you can ask or imagine. I can do more than you can think. But notice in that verse, it's saying, I wanna do it through you. I want to do more than you could ask or imagine through you. Students, right now, because the Holy Spirit is alive and active in your life, because like the Bible says, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is available to you and you have. This verse says, because of all that, God can do infinitely more through you than you can ask, think, or imagine. Students, God wants you to get to the end of your life and look back on your life and just have your jaw drop and be in awe and say, I can't believe God used me to do all that. God wants you to be in awe as you look back and see all that he's done in your life with his help and with his strength. But students, the main point tonight is God will finish what he started. God will keep growing you and making you more and more like Jesus every single day. God will continue to help, to help you beat the sins that you struggle with. And God will finish his plan for your life as you seek to live it out. And once again, you may be here and you're like, yeah, Nehemiah, of course, he knew God's plan for his life. He knew what he was supposed to do, but I've got no clue. And I'll tell you again, that's okay. You know, maybe you're here and you're like, gosh, like, I can't, sometimes I can't even find my shoes in the morning before school, let alone know God's plan for my life. But I just wanna give you a simple way to know what God's plan is for your life. Always remember students this, remember this, your gifts and talents are the key to your destiny. Because God gave you the gifts and talents that you have for a reason. Case in point, I love music. I love playing guitar, drums, bass, all that stuff. And I have played on worship teams for the past 18 years. And God has taken the gifts he has given me and he used those to help other people experience him in worship. Remember, your gifts and talents are the key to your destiny. God gave you those for a reason because he wants to use those. But like we talked about last week and as we see from Nehemiah, Living for God isn't easy at times. Sometimes it's hard. So what do we do? Scripture gives us this amazing promise, 2 Timothy 2.12, if we endure hardship, we will reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. So this verse tells us that when we keep following Jesus and doing what's right, even when it's hard, that one day we'll reign with him. And students, we just celebrated Christmas a little while ago we celebrated Jesus, the Son of God, entering human history as a baby to grow up and eventually die on a cross to pay the price for my sin and your sin against God so we can be brought back into relationship with God. But you know what the Bible says? That again, Jesus is going to enter in to human history, but he's not coming back as a baby. He's coming back as a king and he's coming back as a ruler and he's coming back to set up his kingdom here on earth. And the Bible says that when we live for Jesus every day and we fulfill his plan for our life and we're faithful to him, it says one day we have the hope of reigning with him, ruling with him, being in charge in some way in his future kingdom. And that's our future hope. But remember last week we talked about, hey, someday it's payday. Someday it's payday. When we live for Jesus and we keep doing what is right, even when it's hard, we know that God's gonna reward us. 
We know that it's gonna pay off because God's way is best. I've been following Jesus seriously for 19 years now. And I'll tell you students, I don't regret it at all. Not a single bit do I regret it. It's worth it all. So I encourage you students, take my testimony, take, take my word for it. I've been doing this for 19 years and it is worth it, okay? So remember, God's way is best. Keep doing what's right, even when it's hard. Keep following Jesus, it's worth it. Let's pray tonight. God, we just come to you tonight and I just pray for every single student in this room, God. God, I pray for those who are discouraged and maybe think that, that you're, you're giving, giving up on them and you're disappointed with them, God. God, I pray that you'll help them to remember your promise in your word, that he who began a good work in you will complete it. God, I thank you that you are committed to us you are committed to seeing us grow. You are committed to fulfilling your plan in our life. God, thank you so much for your love for us, God, that isn't based on performance. Your love that is unconditional to us. God, I pray that you'll help each and every single student in this room to seek you and discover what, their, what your plan is for their life, God. God, and I just pray that you'll help us to walk out that plan the best we can every single day. And we pray all this in Jesus' name, amen.